Hi FlossTube, uh, my name's Pam. This is my uh, new FlossTube channel, Stitching in the Land of Good Enough. Um, I have been thinking about starting a FlossTube channel for probably about the past four or five months and this social distancing being stuck home with my family for the past two months um, has finally made me realize now is the time to do it. I think if I force my sons and my husband to listen to my ranting, maybe ranting is not the best word, but my, my passion for cross stitching any longer, they may throw all of my stuff out onto the street. <laughs> Um, so I decided to, to try, to try floss tube. And at the very least, I will have, you know, 30 to 60 minutes to talk to myself in a camera about the hobby that I love. That being said, if you can't tell by the name of my channel, um, the hobby that I love is not something I'm a perfectionist about. I tend to land, live in the land of good enough. Um, so if you're looking for a channel where you're going to see perfect stitches, um, lovely backs, this may not be the channel for you. I tend to make mistakes and fudge it and move on. Um, I'm okay with that because I stitch for me. Um, I'm, but I'm never going to win a blue ribbon at the state fair for my stitching. Um, a little bit about me as a stitcher. I have been stitching for, um... I have some math in my head, maybe a little over 20 years. I finished my first piece at age 18. Um, I, it was a gift, I don't have it to show. Um, and I've stitched sporadically over the years since then. Some, I go through phases where sometimes the only thing I'm doing is cross stitching. Um, and then I go through phases where I, I might not pick anything up for six or seven months. Um, the past few years, I have been pretty, pretty hardcore with my stitching. I stitch almost every night the past few years. Um, I tend to stitch uh, probably more sampler pieces, um, but I don't know that I have a particular like st style that I love or, well, actually I can say I don't love full coverage. You're never gonna see me stitch a full coverage piece. So if you're into full coverage and you love to watch channels where people are stitching haids, or things like that, um, this isn't the channel for you. <laughs> um, but um, back to me as a stitcher, I apologize for saying um 50,000 times. It has been, you know, a while since I've made a video. Um, I used to sell LuLaRoe, so I made a lot of live videos. Um, live videos are very different though from uh, pre-recorded videos. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I forgot what I was talking about. I totally, I totally fell down a rabbit hole. Me as a stitcher, 20 years. I stitched for about 20 years. My mom taught me how to cross stitch. Um, she stitched quite a bit back in the um, 80s. So there was a lot, a lot of mauve and blues and hunter greens and hearts and geese stitched along the way, that sort of thing. Um, so my first few pieces were sort of like that back you know, 20 something years ago. Um, but I've progressed since then. Um, what else would you oh and I've mostly been a lonely stitcher so up until I discovered floss tube last summer I really thought I was like the only person stitching in Rhode Island anywhere like it I didn't know any other stitchers in real life since I discovered floss tube I was inspired to go out and find some other stitchers in my area um so I do, I, right before we started social distancing, I, I had started stitching with a few in-person groups. Um, so that was nice. But because I have been a lonely stitcher for 20 years, um, I, I had no idea that there were things like needle minders or, um, I don't know, gosh, a whole, a whole lot of things. So even though I've been stitching for decades, I still feel like I'm a new stitcher in that I just, I don't, I don't know a lot of the terminology. I don't know, you know, I, when my last needle shop local, my last LNS closed in my area, probably like 10 years ago. So I wasn't really keeping up with designers. Also, I tend to be a very um, monogamous stitcher. 
uh, maybe uh, I'm going to say semi-monogamous and I was mostly semi-monogamous until probably like a lot of you, I discovered floss tube. Um, so I tend to stitch on the same project at least for a few weeks to a few months before, if I have not finished it by then, I'll get bored and I'll move on. Um, but so you, you may see the same thing every week, just progress on the same thing every week, except for right. Well, even kind of a little bit right now during, um, I'm doing stitch Sania, which is Lindy stitches, Stephanie from Lindy stitches version of stitch mania, but we'll get into that after. So, um, I guess that I, I don't know if I left you on a cliffhanger about <laughs> something about me. Um, monogamous stitcher. Oh, so, um, since discovering floss tube, I've had to give myself a cap The the idea of like having 100 whips gives me anxiety. So, but that being said, I'm seeing everything that everybody's stitching and I want to start it all. So I've capped myself at 12. I'm allowed to have 12 whips. And if I, if I have 12 whips, I can't start a new one until I have finished one. Um, I don't currently have 12. Um, I'm not gonna show all my whips today. I'm just gonna show what I've worked on this month. But, um, so I, I do have like two spots open and I think maybe we'll talk about that at the end of this month, my plans going forward for June. All right, I think that's enough about me. I apologize if that was ranty and rambly and didn't make any sense whatsoever. I promise I'll get better, maybe, I don't know. Um, okay, so, um, I have been, like I said, I've been doing um, Stephanie from Lindy Stitches, her version of uh, Mania, which if you don't know what Mania is, I didn't either until I started watching Floss Tube. Um, but it, it's it's a fun thing everybody does a little bit differently in May. A lot of people, it started back in 2015 where they did 15 new starts. Um, and it's kind of progressed from there. I, the, the idea of doing even 15 new starts, a lot of people are doing like 20 new starts because it's 2020. I can't, I can't, first of all, that's over my cap. And second of all, that gives me an extreme amount of anxiety. So what I did was, um, I kind of modified, uh, Lindy Stitch's version of Mania, which she is calling Stitch Sania in which you have a goal that you need to meet on a whip during the weekdays. And then if you meet that goal on the weekend, you can start something new. Um, a lot of people are using this as an opportunity to get a lot of progress on one of their really big projects um, that had been kind of like they've stalled on. Um, what I did was I, I have a bunch of, I had a bunch of smaller projects or even maybe medium projects that were so close. Like I was at the finish line that I could finish in a week and that were just kind of languishing. So I said, I'm going to pick four of those. And if I finish them on the weekday, then on the weekend, I can start something new. Um, Besides Stitch Sania, I have, I'll show this one first. I am stitching every single day on Carolyn Manning's, it's got a long name, the Granny Square Daily Temperature Stitch Along. Um, it's super cute. So the idea is, I hope that's not backwards because it's backwards for me. Um, you stitch one of these little granny squares according to the high temp of the day, every single day. Um, again, it's a lot of people have modified it. They've decided to stitch the cold temp and the high temp or the average temp. For simplicity's sake, I gotta find a place to put my stuff that I've already showed. Um, for simplicity's sake, I, I'm doing the high temp. So this is where I'm at. I have kept up with it every single day. Um, and then I don't know if you can tell, let me see, where is the first? There's the first. Um, the beginning of every single month I outline with, you're not gonna be able to see the sparkle, but it's yellow, the yellow etoile. I don't remember the number, the DMC yellow etoile. So the outside of every single month is in yellow sparkly thread floss. So I'm loving this. I'm not sure. I'm sure I'll frame it when it's all done. Um, I don't know if I'm going to put my, like where I live in the year somewhere on here as, as a record. Um, 
I haven't decided yet. I've got almost over half the year to figure that out anyway. So that's been fun. Um, I have run into a bit of a problem with it though, because I don't know if any of you are having this problem. There's a lot of black in here. It's a lot of 310. I have run out of 310. So, um, and I can't find it. There is no 310 at Walmart. There's no any DMC at Walmart right now near me. And um, in, I'm in Rhode Island. In Rhode Island, they have opened non-essential retail back up uh, for the past week. So I did venture out this weekend um, for, uh, I needed floss for another thing that I was getting up, which I'll show you. Um, but they had, so I went to Michael's. Um, they had no 310 either. One, two, three stitch didn't have 310. My mother had old generic skeins of six stranded cotton. That was the equivalent to 310. I've taken it. I used it a little bit in another project. I'll show you. I think it'll be fine if I can't get 310 before I, I need to stitch some more of the black outlines. And you know, if, if I have, if I have to use it, then I have to use it. And if it shows up differently, this is the land of good enough. And I'll just make a little note on the back of my frame, um, that it was the quarantine times and I couldn't get 310. I think that's going to be the story on a lot of my projects this year. All right. Where did my notes go? I have to keep notes. I'm never going to remember what I stitched when. Okay. So that happens every single day, usually right after dinner. And then everything else this month has been my Stitch Stania stuff. So from May 1st to May 8th, I did not give myself a new start that very first weekend in May. Um, it felt like I didn't have a whole week to get something done. It sort of felt like a, like a cheat to start something, even though like the first weekend was the second and third, it felt like a cheat. So what I did was I picked the thing that had the most stitching that needed to be done, the project that had the most stitching that I wasn't quite sure was going to be able to get done in five days. I gave myself from May 1st through May 8th. And then if I got it finished, then I could start something on the 9th and 10th. So this is um, Sleepy Hollow. It was a mystery stitch along by um, Tiny Modernist. And it came, I'm going to get it a little closer. So it came in four sections. And let me just show those. So it came in, you got four charts and they came out like once a month. And you didn't know like what you knew what the first pattern was going to be, but then you didn't know what the other three and, and then you could, I thought this was cute. I've never done one. Maybe in the future, you can finish them individually in drums if you'd like. And then I don't know, you can see there is a border which you could print out free on her, on her, on Tiny Modernist's website. Um, and so I printed it out and taped it together. Um, so I got it finished. I finished, it took me all the way, it took me all the way until the Friday, the 8th. And it was this bottom section I needed to complete and so where I had to use that generic uh, black thread, black floss from my from my mom was on the backstitched fence and that backstitched tree and the backstitched cobweb. And you can't tell. You really can't tell. It look it look. I mean, it's only one strand and it's backstitched, so maybe you'll be able to tell when I'm using you know when I'm doing it two over two on something. Um, but you can't tell here. So I'm super excited that this is done. I started this last summer when the first one came out and I was keeping up with it really well. And then it was September and, and, and all of a sudden I was falling behind. And then once you start falling behind on a stitch, I mean, I, for me, when I start falling behind on a stitch along, then I lose my oomph and I'm like, hmm, oh, well, put it away. So uh, everything I did the, the DMC, she had, a, I think a few fancy flosses in here. Um, I did the DMC. Oh, and it's on 32 count, uh, vintage stormy night, which is that it's got the modeling printed on the front, but the back is not modeled. So it's that, that printed, uh, I think it's Weigart. Um, oh, so the only thing that I did differently is the, 
stars where is there a star the stars i and you're not gonna be able to tell because you can never tell on camera um i i stitched those in a toile i was originally thinking i was going to stitch them in that glow in the dark floss i think dmc puts it out and because i thought that would be fun if the stars glowed in the dark and then um so i saved all the star i had to stitch all the stars too uh that first week in may because i had saved all the stars for last because i for what i thought all the glow <laughs> and the dark of my, would would get used up if i stitched them I, sometimes my brain doesn't make sense anyway so then when i went to stitch with it i couldn't even get my needle threaded and i'm a i'm a licker with my with my floss um i don't have a floss threader i i mean a needle threader i i could not get my I could not get, I couldn't use the glow in the dark floss. So I was like, well, <sighs> yeah. So I, the Etoile Sparkly, it's fun. What I'm thinking of doing with this is doing sort of like a flat finish and then putting it on a board. And I don't, I don't think I'm going to frame it. Um, that being said, I am not crafty. I, I stitch. That is the extent of my craftiness. Um, so I have never finished my own pieces, like ever. I used to have an LNS in Cumberland, Rhode Island. It was called With Heart and Soul. I miss it so much. Um, my closest LNS now is an hour away. It's uh, The World in Stitches in Littleton, Mass. And Randy, who owns the shop, is fantastic but it is an hour away and she doesn't do framing. And my old LNS did framing and I would finish things and I would just take them to her and they would get framed and it was like magic. And now I've got to figure out how to do this stuff on my own. So I'm inspired by seeing other people do their own finishing. So I'm going to try it. What the worst that happens is I ruin hours of cross-stitching fun. That would be bad. But I mean, probably not the worst thing that could happen to you. Okay, so I finished that and that meant I could have a new start. And that new start was Clementine by Plum Street Samplers. Now I am making this and I'm, I, I don't think my daughter is going to watch this ever. I don't even know if I'll tell her I've done a floss tube. Um, but I have three children, by the way, 23, 20 and 16. And um, so my oldest my daughter um, has two enormous orange tabby cats um, and they're my grand kitties. And so when I saw this, I was like, I, I absolutely need to stitch this for her for her birthday. So I need to have this done by July. Um, so I thought, well, that's a perfect new start. So I am stitching it on 32 count Confederate gray by Weeks Dye Works. Um, which I am not, look at how cute is he? That's how far I got. I stitched this on, um, the Saturday and the Sunday, the 9th and the 10th. And that's how far I got. I did make a few changes because I just, when I decided to do the, to do Stitch Sania, um, everything was closed. So, um, I went to three stitch orders because I did have a few out. We're taking forever to come in. So I just kind of kitted it up with, those are not the called for colors, um, for the cat or honestly, um, for the flower petals or the middle of the flower. So, but I think it looks great. Um, but I, again, I'm not a fan of the weeks, but I had ordered, I think this is a fat quarter. And so, I mean, obviously I'm going to have a lot of extra fabric. Um, so I'll have to use it for other things, but I thought that it looked, this looked great on there. Um, I think I'm going to finish this as a pillow and, and that's like, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. But I, I love, I love how this, I think I, I just, I love, this has to be one of my favorite things I've stitched on. I did not want to put it down at the end of the weekend. Did not want to put it down. But I did because it was time to finish another whip. So I chose for the week of the 11th to the 15th. So this past week that just went by. I 
Stitched and Finished Jack's House Pin Keep by Stacey Nett. Oh, let me show you the chart. I do have other things I want to talk to you about with this chart too. Jack's House Pin Keep by Stacey Nash Primitives. Um, I think I'm going to finish this as a pillow as well. And I'm going to do this one first because A, it's um, finished already where Clementine is not and B it'll sort of be my practice pillow um so a few things about this one I had everything stitched except jack up at the top and the house at the bottom and I had to put all the white in am I sh I'm showing you the back this is better um so all of the uh, antique lace in the flowers up here and the ha I had to do the entire house and jack up at the top was what I had to finish. Um, this was, I won this chart from someone on floss tube. And I'm hoping that you can tell me who it was. I had an issue with floss tube last fall where I don't know what happened, but like all my subscriptions disappeared and I had to resubscribe to everybody I like, and I could not find this woman again. Um, she had sent me this nice little card. Um, so if you, her name was Kathy, she had short hair. She was not a prolific floss tuber. Um, if you, if you know who she is, if you remember this giveaway, and, and you were like, oh, I wished I had won that and I recognize it. And um, and you could let me know because I never properly thanked her and then I couldn't find her. So she gave, she had given away the chart and the fabric, which is 32 count raw natural linen. And the and a, this super cute project bag by Nikki's Notables. Adorable. And she gave me the three flosses and they were on this floss ring and I don't know who she is except that her name is Kathy and I really appreciated the project and I got it done. Um, so if, if, that, if that rings a bell to you and you, and you look, could let me know, that'd be awesome. Um, so uh, back to, to, the, to my finish. I love the house. Like I love the house. So here was my problem. So Kathy gave me the, all the flosses and it just called for three colors. And the brown is, um, gentle arts picnic basket. And I, so the roof is supposed to be in brown and the foundation of the house and Jack and sorry, Jack was, is, is in the ginger snap. Um, I didn't have enough picnic basket left or I, maybe I did, but I was nervous. It wasn't going to be enough and I didn't want to start the roof and then not be able to finish this because I couldn't start my new start if I didn't get this finished. So I had, um, gentle arts garden gate. So I did the house, the roof in garden gate and I did the foundation in garden gate and, um, and then I did Jack in the garden gate too, because I felt like I needed to bring that color up to the top half of, of this so that it, it made a little more sense. And I love the way it looked. And as I was stitching with the garden gate, I was like, I wish I had never used picnic basket. I wish that I had stitched everything that was supposed to be picnic basket in the garden gate. I think that would have looked fantastic. Um, also I did the windows. They are in picnic basket as well, but I did them, um, with one strand instead of two because I just didn't want re I didn't want that color saturation in the windows and it kind of gives it a little bit of a different texture and I love it and everything else is two over two on the 32 count so that was that I was super super proud of that one and that I had solved my my floss problem um before I put this away I wanted to talk so the flosses came on this little like wire hoop ring thingy. I don't know what it's called, but if you know what these are called, I want more. 
I loved this and I want to kit up all my projects with these, but I don't know how to search for them because I don't know what they're called. So if you know what these are, if you could let me know down in the comments, I would really appreciate it because I need more. Okay. So I got Jack's house done, which meant this past weekend, I got a new start. Yay. Um, and I got three days on my new start because I finished, uh, Jack's house on the Thursday. And so I didn't wait for the Saturday for my new start. I started my new start on the Friday. Um, and that was summer by the cross-eyed cricket. Super cute. Love that. This is not actually my usual style. It has a little more like fiddly details and um, a little bit more back stitching than I usually like to do, but it was just so happy. Um, I love it. And so in, I cross stitch a lot, but I don't, and I, I do have, um, and we'll, I'll probably show this in a video one day. I do have a, I call it the back of the closet hanger that pro probably has like 30 projects on it that are that are finished but not fully finished and um I have one framed piece on my wall so all, for everything I've ever done I have one framed piece on my wall so what I'm hoping to do I want to stitch all four of these and what I'm hoping to do is I have this small wall where like the season piece will go you know towards the top and then I'll be able to finish all sorts of little seasonal pieces and, and they'll go under it on the wall and I'll have like a wall of fun little cross stitch probably like smalls not anything too big so this is the first one I'm working on this this is my plan um I do have to get the others I don't have the others so this is how far I got this is stitched on 32 count lavender lugana beautiful love this purple so i am i showing you the back again i'm showing you the back so i got i hope i'm showing you this right because i can't see i got the m done and quite a bit of the grapevine and the middle of the sunflower and i started on the little carrots and it's so cute it's so cute um I am, this has, I'm going to show you, it has so, so much floss, like a ton of DMC. It's probably like 30 or 40 skeins of DMC, DMC is called for. I mean, probably not the whole skeins because it's got all these little fiddly bits and like the colors get used one time. Um, and even with all of this, I am still missing floss. So this was my venture out to, to, uh, Michael's I had floss to stitch this and I had the floss to stitch that like pinky salmony color and the M um and then I needed everything else so but I still don't have there there's supposed to be like a dark purple that goes in those grapes I don't have that um there are a few I still don't have the color I need for the petals I need uh 745 I think for that um, and it's all DMC and it's fun. I do, I tend to stitch with fancy flosses these days more than I stitch with DMC. And then when I stitch with DMC, I'm like, oh, I love DMC because I like to use the loop method to start. And I don't do that. Mostly I don't do that when I stitch with the overdides. Sometimes I do, if I don't think it matters, if it's not heavily variegated, um, but mostly I don't. So, but I do love, Loop Method is my favorite. And then when I get the DMC projects out, I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. Okay. So that brings, so that brings, that's everything that I have done so far this May. Everything I've worked on, everything I finished, that brings me to what's gonna happen this week. So I'm really not looking forward to this, but I am like, unbelievably close to a finish on this one and it seems silly not to stitch it it is so this is my pl my plan for a finish for this week i'm going to start it today it needs to be finished by friday it is 
Tired Trio by Plum Street. And uh, I think, let me show you the chart. It's adorable. So cute. I, w I couldn't resist the, the sloths. Um, but here's the thing. <sighs> because I was a lonely stitcher for, you know, the better part of 20 years, um, I didn't even know that there was fabric beyond 32 count. So I had, you know, I, I learned on Ada and then I, pro uh, what was it? I think the woman who owned, um, with heart and soul in Cumberland was, her name was Monica. She sat me down one day in her shop and showed me how to stitch on linen. And so I've probably been stitching on linen since the early 2000s. And, um, but I didn't know there was anything beyond 32 count. So when I got this and I'm like 36 count, can I, can I do a 36 count? And I, so this was my first, I think I hate 36 count is really what this boils down to. I had never, I didn't even know people stitched <laughs> using one strand of floss. I thought that you cross stitched two over two and that, that was that. So this was my first, um, my first whip with, on a 36 count. And I do, I do not know what the color is. Um, I do know it's weeks. I'm not a fan of weeks. I know that now and I tend to avoid it. Um, but so it's weeks, so it's a little bit floppy. Um, and it's one strand and I, I don't like the coverage. I do, can you see like that tree trunk is so spacey and my stitching is pretty much crap and I don't love it. And then I have to do these little faces one over one or a 10 stitch. And I'll be honest, I have to Google that. I have no idea what a 10 stitch is. So I have since learned to stitch on 40 count, which I love. I love one strand on 40 count. It might be my, my new favorite thing. Um, and I, I'm one of the whips that I'm working on right now is uh, Seeking Refuge, which I think everybody is working on right now. Seeking Refuge by the Scarlet House. Um, if you want, I'm not going to show that today, but I have a bunch of pictures of my progress on that on my Instagram account, which is Pam Thibault Dumont. Um, I'm going to try, I think that you can, if you click my about section on the channel, you, I'm going to try to put a link in the description. This being my first floss two video, I will see how the description box goes. Um, it's a learning process, I'm sure. But if you follow me on Instagram, Pam Thibault Dumont, um, P-A-M-T-H-I-B-A-U-L-T-D-U-M-O-N-T. Sorry, uh, there's some French Canadian last names in there. And I realize that the spelling might be a little bit crazy. Um, you can see my progress on Seeking Refuge. Anyway, that was the point. I did my first one over one on that piece. So now it's kind of one of the reasons I've also been holding off on finishing this because I have been scared to do the one over one in their little faces. And, and now I'm not so scared about that. Although I still think I'm going to research what the heck a 10 stitch is. So anyway, super close, obviously super close to a finish here. That's this week's project. Um, and if I get that done, um, so I just touched my face. I apologize. I, that's like the big taboo right now. Um, Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts on Etsy has something called the Stitching Book Club on Instagram. I think it's also on Facebook, but I, I'm not super great about Facebook groups. Um, so she has she does this this Stitching Book Club where it's a mystery stitch along, um, and so I have no idea what it's going to look like, but. They, she chooses classic books. She's done Pride and Prejudice. Um, they just wrapped up The Three Musketeers. And this will be the first one I'm doing, The Secret Garden. One of my favorite books from my childhood. So I'm super excited. I don't think I've read it since I was an early teen. I've read it a few times, but I have not read it probably since I was 13 or 14. Um, so that's like 30 years. Um, so 
this, the first pattern for this, I think is coming out on the 24th, which is the Sunday. So I felt like that made sense to be my new start for the weekend. It is on this gorgeous, I don't want to take everything out of the bag, so I apologize for any sort of like plastic glare, but it's, I'm doing it on 16 count chocolate raspberry Ada. Uh, that color is gorgeous. And then I got all the, it, it's DMC and those colors are so pretty. I'm, I'm wicked excited about this. So that will be the 24th. And to be honest, I'm starting this, whether I get Tired Trio done or not. But I picked Tired Trio for this week because there's so little left till I have a finish that um, there's no way I'm not. Well, I probably knock on wood. There's no way I'm not going to get it done. Um, I'm probably going to get it done way sooner than the 24th. So I think what, what I'll do is... That's it. That's all my... That's all my whips. Um, I think what I'll do is if I get a finish, like say on Wednesday or Thursday, I'll bring Clementine back out because I tend to be a little anxious when something is supposed to be a gift. I have to have it done by the middle of July. I have to have it done way before the middle of July if I'm going to try to fiddle around and make it into a pillow. So I'd like to have it done probably by the middle of June. So, um, which gives me a month to get Clementine back done. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of anxiety now. Can you see? Um, so I think I'll bring Clementine back out and I'll work on that till the first, um, till the first pattern comes out on the 24th for the secret garden. Um, and then I will tell you what's going to happen for the last week in May next Monday. I'm hoping to do these every Monday morning. I have no idea how long they're going to take to upload. Again, this is brand new to me. Um, I'm hoping that they're up and ready to be watched Monday night. And, and you know, if nobody watches this but my own eyeballs, that's okay. Because I've been able, I'm 37 minutes in now. And I've been able to talk all the cross stitch that I've wanted to talk about. And that nobody, their eyes glaze over. And they're like, I can tell that they're thinking in their heads, please stop. Please stop talking. Um, so this has been really fantastic for me anyway, even if it's not fantastic for you. Um, before I wrap, sorry, I, my nose is super itchy. I did hear that your nose gets itchy when you're doing this. And now I feel like I need to like burn my hands. Um, okay. Uh, what else I do? I think every week I will also talk about what I'm reading. Um, and this tends, this is tying in. Uh, so my, uh, I have two other hobbies besides cross stitch I am I can is reading a hobby I don't know if reading is a hobby um but I'm a voracious reader um although I do read less now because I've been cross stitching so much I mean there's only, only so much time in your life and and I can hear you saying but Pam you could listen to your books while you're cross stitching and that's true but then I wouldn't have time to watch floss tube and I wouldn't have time because when I catch up on all the people I've subscribed to in Floss Tube Land, then I get out my podcast. I love listening to podcasts. So when would there be time to listen to books? Um, so I do read a little bit less now that I'm cross-stitching a little bit more. But Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts, if you aren't watching Caroline, you, she is like the Floss Tube version of, for me anyway, of Mr. Rogers. She's got this soothing voice. She's so friendly. She's so nice. It, she, she always, she stitches completely different from me. I don't, she likes geometrics. I'm not really a fan of geometric patterns. Um, but I, so anyway, the, I'm getting, I'm digressing. So Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts has created a Facebook group called, Facebook group called Cross Stitchers Who Read. It might be Stitchers Who Read, but I think it's Cross Stitchers Who Read. And um, and then Letitia from The Crafty Curator kind of runs the book discussion. And I it we've done one book so far. We did Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. I can't remember if that was the end of April that we discussed it or if it was the beginning of May. But so that one's done. And so now we are doing... Um, or I guess they're doing, but I'm reading. The Lace Reader. 
you know, I probably should have written down who wrote the least reader because I don't know. But it's called The Lace Reader by an, an author that I don't remember the name of. I'll try to put that down in the description box. Again, I'm not sure how the description box is going to go this week. Bits and pieces, we're going to figure this out. But um, it's called The Lace Reader. And, I, and I'm liking it so far. I'm probably, I'm a little under halfway through. I'm trying to kind of, I'm trying to do a chapter a day. I'm listening to it. Oh, my libraries are closed right now. Um, so I'm listening to it and I'm almost halfway in. I think we're going to be talking about it next month. And I'm, I'm feeling a little bit so-so on it. I'm, I'm not going to give an opinion yet, but it's kind of an interesting concept. You should look it up. Anyway, give it a go. Give cross stitchers who read a go because that I'm really enjoying for sure. Um, and I think that's it. Thanks for joining me. Uh, if you have stuck through and watched me this whole time, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, if you want to make sure that you catch my next video, hit the subscribe button. Um, and thanks. Stay safe, stay healthy, and, and have a great week. It's springtime. Bye.